Hey everyone, it's Mike here, and I have a problem with my computer. Check this out. So I'm rendering this video, and my temps are just skyrocketing. I'm looking over 100 degrees Celsius there. And I uh, kind of get a look of, uh, you know, how bad the CPU's working. Can't really see it that well, but it's it's pretty hot. Over 100 degrees is, you know, Celsius is its boiling point, basically. I mean, that's not good, so, you know, all the time I have to you know, cool off my computer here, and it doesn't really help to bring the temps down, so in today's video, I'm going to open up the system, see if I can bring these temps down, and I'm going to show you how to do that by basically putting a new thermal paste and compound on the CPU and on the GPU, and I also have a few other things that I'm going to do to help reduce those temps. So let's go and open up the PC. I've already taken apart the laptop to gain access to the CPU and GPU. If you want to see how to do that, you can click on the video on screen or you can check in the description below. Uh, first, I have to take off the GPU because um, you have to do that to gain access to the CPU, which is actually why I made this video in the first place. As you saw earlier, that was what created the hot temps. The GPU is actually running pretty cool because I've actually taken it apart recently. But since I have to take it out, I am just going to go ahead and do that anyway. By the way, while unscrewing this heatsink, I like to follow the order that's listed on the heatsink itself. So, you know, I unscrew one, two, then three, then four. You don't have to do it that way when you're taking it off, but that's just something I like to do. Now that we've taken off the GPU, let's take a look. Make sure you unplug your fan there. And once you've done that, I mean, so far it looks pretty clean. I mean, a little too much thermal paste there, but not too bad. Um, but yeah, overall clean. My pads are stuck on there. I'm going to replace those. Let's just uh, put this off the side now. Um, if you haven't seen a GPU, that's basically what it looks like. Um, in the center you got the GPU, and then um, on the side you got the memory, those are the black squares. And then you've got your voltage regulators. Now to take off the CPU heatsink. Like I said before, make sure you follow the numbered cross pattern. Um, well, you don't have to when you take it off, but I like to, and I think it's a good idea. And look, I even follow <laughs> what I say. Like, I, I just went out of order. But, um, just make sure, of course, it's loose. And then it shouldn't be hard to take off, but it might be a little sticky if the paste dried. Just like when you heard that click there, because the paste dried up quite a bit, it means it's not as effective. And as you can see, um, it's dried up pretty well. It looks like a thick glob on the heat sink there. And now you, I just clean it off. I just use a regular tissue. Kind of get the early grime off. And I have actual solution to clean it with, which I'm going to do after this. But I just like to clean off the excess um, ahead of time, just to make things easier. Plus that chemical uh, removal that I use is pretty expensive. Now that we're done with this, I'm going to now clean the GPU heatsink. I recommend you clean that off too because you have to anyway. Be mindful of the thermal pads because they are hard to find. I was able to find some and I'll leave um, a link in the description if some people want it so they can get some too if you want to replace those as well. Let's look at the materials that I'm going to use to apply to the CPU and GPU. I have thermal compound, thermal compound cleaner, service purifier, copper shims, thermal pads, and of course a thermal compound spreader. Before we can apply a new thermal compound, we have to remove the old thermal compound. So right now I'm using a tissue to remove all the excess thermal compound. And the goal is to make sure that you get rid of all of the thermal compound because old um, thermal compound residue will actually cause your temps to go up. So my goal right now is to make sure that I get rid of all of it. And I will, by the time uh, I'm done, um, for the hard to reach 
compound, you can use a Q-tip. Um, and then after I get rid of the thermal compound, I will use thermal compound cleaner to kind of get rid of the hard to reach stuff that I can't get. And the thermal compound uh, remover um, does a great job removing excess that's hard to reach. In the kit that I have, there's actually two parts to it. So I have the thermal compound remover, which, like I said, will remove all the excess that's hard to reach. And then there's the surface purifier, which basically cleans the surface off entirely after you've cleaned it and kind of um, makes it ready to be um, to have thermal compound applied to it again. I'll be very honest, you don't need these things. I end up using it because one, I thought there might have been a better way to clean thermal compound cleaner than using rubbing alcohol, which is an easier alternative. You can definitely use rubbing alcohol and it does a great job. I, I used to use that for the longest time. But uh, what I found out is that the thermal compound cleaner seems to break up thermal compound a lot better, in my opinion, than rubbing alcohol. But if you're really in a bind or if you don't want to spend the money, rubbing alcohol would be totally fine. You'd just probably spend a little longer cleaning it. Here's a closer look at the thermal compound I'm using from Polymatech. It's PK2. And I like to use metal-based thermal compound, but you can use whatever you want. Let's first apply this to the CPU. I like to use a nice ample amount where I can kind of spread out nice and flat on the shiny part of the CPU, which is where it makes uh, contact with the CPU heatsink. You don't really need it anywhere else, and you shouldn't put it anywhere else because um, that unnecessary heat on the CPU can actually make things worse. So just make sure you're right on the shiny part right in the middle um, I like to spread out kind of thin it doesn't need to be thick um, you know I just added some here I just want to make sure the whole surface is covered nice and evenly try your best to spread it out try not to be too messy if you're a little messy it's okay but just make sure that contact is covered And I think that should be about good. Sorry, I'm a little bit of a perfectionist here, so I'm trying to smooth it out. All right, that should be good. And let's put the little excess there on the GPU because stuff's expensive. Now I'm going to apply copper shims to the CPU. You don't have to do this, but um, I'm doing this for two reasons. One, I've read that it helps to um, transfer heat, but the second reason is actually um, to create, uh, correct an issue in which I had thermal adhesive on the CPU heatsink and I scratch it when removing it. So now I'm using thermal shims to fix that. And right now I'm just adding the shims and I'm going to put on thermal compound in between the shims so they kind of stick together and they have a little friction and I'm also going to um, I'm also going to then put a little bit of thermal compound on the top of the shim so it um, has that little bit of extra um, heat transfer to the the, the heatsink and I'm not going to worry about spreading it because it'll naturally spread out once I start screwing that in the heat sink. And you know, be careful not to bend those fins we're putting it in. I'm having a little trouble here. But um once you get once you get the heat sink in, as I was saying before, this is a, the time you should be following the screw pattern, so make sure you go in order one then go across to two then across to three and then across to four and you don't have to apply too much pressure to the heat sink 
um, you know, just hold it down enough so that it's not shifting as you're trying to screw it down. And the screws will naturally apply enough pressure to the heat sink. And with the copper shims, I'm confident that it will make contact and the heat will transfer um, very well to the heat sink and, to, and blow out with the help of the blower fan. Onto the GPU now, I'm going to apply thermal paste to it. And just like before, I'm going to make sure I evenly spread it out so there's a nice thin layer over the shiny part and only the shiny part. Um, on the GPU it's a little bit more tricky because you have um, these other little parts. I don't know what they are exactly but they're I guess maybe they're voltage regulators for the GPU directly and they're kind of like these little square things that poke up. And, it's kind of a pain when the thermal paste gets in the middle of them, so be very careful when you're spreading this stuff out. And uh, now I'm going to apply one copper shim, and I didn't mention this earlier, but these copper shims are 20 by 20 millimeter, and they are 0.5 millimeter thickness, and I found those fairly easy on eBay, um, but I can throw a, just a link in the description if you need it. And just like with the CPU, just put a little thermal compound in there. I just used the excess on the spreader. So that kind of worked itself out. Okay, since I'm now done with the thermal compounds, I'll clean off the spreader because I don't want that drying off on it. And I'm now going to apply some thermal pads, which I mentioned before I was going to um, put on just to help refurbish the GPU um, because I noticed on the heat sink they were kind of worn out so I'm just going to double up on them because uh, I think they've gotten too thin and I'm basically applying thermal pass to every extruding object on the GPU or any object that's high enough that I know would touch the heat sink because I, I want to make sure that they can transfer the heat into the heat sink so it can get blown out by the fan. And the reason why you use thermal pads as opposed to thermal compound, one, uh, thermal compound um, would get quite messy if you'd use it, and more importantly too, um, thermal pads don't dry out, or at least they don't dry out the same way compound does, so you could have them there for a while and um, they'll probably be pretty good as long as you don't mess around and take off the heat sink. But if you are taking off the heat sink, I recommend taking them off just based on personal experience taking off heat sinks off of GPUs. I know that over time, if you don't replace them, but you continually keep, off, keep on taking off the heat sink, they will eventually will dry out and you'll start to have problems. So... I think they're good to have too. I don't know why they're not easier to find. It kind of sucks too. A lot of the sources are mostly from China. And there's not too many American sources. Even though, ironically, the thermal pads are made by 3M, which is, of course, an American company. But I digress. Um, these particular pads, they kind of suck, as you can see. They don't really stick that well. And you can also see they're not as thick as some of the ones that are already are on there, on the voltage regulators. Um, I wanted to get newer ones that were thick, but I figured since I already had like a hundred of these, um, I, it's just cheaper and easier for me to just double up on them. It's not like I actually need 100. I only need maybe like 20. But, you know, it is what it is. They're good to have. They only cost like $3. I'm all set applying the thermal pads to the GPU, so let's put the GPU heat sink back on. And just like before with the CPU, follow the same cross pattern. So you start with number one, move over to number two, then to number three, and number four, and so on. Make sure not to apply too much pressure to the heat sink because you don't want to damage the GPU. And after I'm done putting on this heat sink, um, I'm going to put 
the whole laptop back together and we'll go to do some testing. The moment of truth. Let's uh, do the same test before where I export the same video that I was doing earlier and let's see if those temps are reduced. Looks like things are so far so good but the CPU hasn't ramped up yet. There it goes. And it looks like well, it's going up. Let's see how bad this is. Um, well, they're definitely the, the CPU usage is up, but the temp isn't going up. We're not hitting that 100 mark yet. Looks like we're just in the low 70s, which is a great improvement. So I would have to say that after all of this, it, this was definitely worth it. I would like to know how much the copper shims have affected the performance. Um, but clearly, um, just getting in there and doing this has definitely improved things greatly. So I hope that you know, you've, you're able to try this on your own system and you're able to benefit from it. And I'm going to turn my fan anyway. But... Um, and I'm just doing that because you don't really want your CPU to rely on that little crappy fan built into the laptop. But, um, anyway, so I hope this is useful to people. I hope that you're able to reduce your temps and improve your performance like I have today. And um, be on the lookout for more videos because I will be making more. I have an awesome video where I'm going to put two SSDs in RAID and you're going to see how awesomely fast that is. So be subscribed, like this video if you like it, and stay tuned.